Hello everyone, welcome to the new video. So today we'll be going through the paper Supervised Approach to Extractive Summarization of Scientific Papers from University College London, UK. So the authors introduce a supervised approach to extractive summarization for scientific papers. So let's understand each of these things and then we'll go through the paper. So starting with supervised. Supervised learning is a learning paradigm in machine learning in which we give input samples as well as class labels to learn a function f that takes input x and maps it to class label y. So you show your model large quantity of these samples and then for any new sample, let's say xt, if you apply that function f, you expect to get a label yt which is close to what the actual label would have been. So this is the concept of supervised learning. Talking about summarization. So summarization is the task of shortening a given piece of text yet maintaining its main essence. So there are two ways in which people usually do summarization. One is called extractive, another is called abstractive. So in this paper, author majorly focuses on doing extractive summarization and discards abstractive summarization for now. So what is extractive summarization? So in extractive summarization, the major task is to give importance and extract relevant lexical units from the given piece of text and mostly its sentences. So just to rephrase, you try to find out important sentences in a given piece of text which kind of represent your summary. Now there are multiple ways how you do it ranging from graph based algorithms which are unsupervised in nature mostly. But in this paper, we'll see how authors essentially talk about incorporating a supervised version for doing this kind of a task. Also, authors talk about using scientific articles as their data set. So I believe they're definitely going to use some structural properties that come inherently with such kind of data sets. Okay, with this background, let's see what paper has to say. So they say, in this paper, we introduce a new data set for summarization of computer science publication by exploiting large resource of author provided summaries. Okay, so as a part of the paper, apart from just introducing a technique of supervised extractive summarization, the authors also seem to provide a new data set for summarization that is around computer science research publications. They also mention about author provided summaries, which means they are not pseudo generating the actual labels. Instead, they already have important set of sentences which have been marked by the author themselves. Okay. We develop models on the data set, making use of neural sentence encoding and traditional used summarization features and show that models which encode sentences as well as their local and global context perform best. Okay, so authors are saying that they use the same data set for modeling purposes and for each sentence to say if it is a part of summary or not, they derive features that capture both local and global context. So what do they mean by local and global context? Consider a sentence S that has 10 words. Let's say we want to get a vector representation for this sentence. Then a local context would derive all the features for this sentence based on the words that occur in this sentence itself. Whereas if we talk about getting a vector representation for this sentence based on global context, then we would consider nearby sentences as well as some kind of positioning to where the sentence occurs in the full document. So that kind of features essentially act as a global context. Let's move forward. So here the authors give an example of what a highlight would mean. So if the paper title was statistical estimation of names of HTTP servers with domain name graphs. So this is essentially the full highlight that they have from the original authors, which they are treating as ground truth. And the sentences in these highlights are nothing but some sentences extracted from the original text. So which they have marked with red color over here. Okay. Then they talk about data set and problem formulation. We release a novel data set of extractive summarization comprising 10148 computer science publications. So all the publications are from science direct. So there were 27 domains, but they chose to work on computer science. They are saying each paper will have title, abstract, author written text, which is the ground truth for that paper and author defined keywords. So that essentially talks about the main topics that are there in the paper. The highlight statements are sentences that should convey the main takeaways from each paper and our gold summaries. And the phrases are topics, okay? Then they say, 
both abstract and highlights can be thought of as a summary to the paper which is true since highlight statements unlike sentences in the abstract generally do not have dependencies between them we opt to choose those as a gold summary statements for developing summarization models okay they could have chosen abstract as the ground truth but since if you read the abstract there is a topical flow that you can figure it out like in starting they usually talk about the motivation then they derive towards methodology and at last they talk about the conclusion so this is approximate flow of how an abstract goes so there was no flow as such when they saw the highlighted summaries by the authors so that's why the author didn't go about choosing abstract as the ground truth because that would have added a bias of topical sequence while modeling fair enough moving forward they frame the problem of extractive summarization as the task of binary sentence classification they would assign each sentence a label of 0 or 1 so given a sentence a zero label would mean it's not a part of summary whereas one would mean it's part of summary and they put all the sentences from the document in the training dataset without any order okay then authors talk about creating testing and training dataset as mentioned before they are using 10k papers they divide the dataset into two parts one is cs pubsum and the other is cs pubsum ext which is the extended list since they are treating this use case as a supervised learning problem so for cs pubsum they already have actual labels which are the sentences from the highlights but they had to generate some negative samples as well so what they say is we generate equal number of negative samples which are randomly sampled from bottom 10% of the sentences which are worst summaries in the paper and they use the metric rouge l so which essentially means for every sentence in the document they do a rouge comparison or rouge l to be precise rouge l comparison with the highlight and give a score to each sentence so let's say you had 10 sentences you would have given some score to each of these sentences considering these are in the sorted format you pick last 10% of the sentences then you pick k samples from this lower 10% which is equal to positive samples that you have in a data set so this is how they create their data set of negative and positive samples which are equally balanced with this they have a total of 85490 training instances and with cs pubsum extended they are essentially talking about extending the previous set because of certain limitations so what they are saying is the data set that they have is not big enough for training a good summarization system so what they do is we generate additional training samples for each paper with highlight rouge so which find sentences that are similar to the highlights so this is similar to cs pubsum for every sentence in the document they are doing a rouge with the highlight sentences and then they are picking some top sentences that have high rouge with the highlight which again act as a potential candidate that can be added to the original training data set and similarly they pick up lower 10% samples that act as a negative set so this is how they are extending their data set and calling it cs pubsum ext with this technique now they have a total of 263k samples in the training set okay so talking about rouge matrix so rouge is a evaluation matrix that is usually used in summarization systems and it has been seen to correlate to how humans also evaluate the summary so the basic idea of how we calculate rouge between two summaries is based on their n gram overlap the higher the overlaps you have the higher the rouge matrix you will be having which means they share common set of words within themselves in this paper previously we saw authors mentioning about rouge l where l stands for longest common subsequence which helps us identify the longest common n gram sequence in both the summaries now let's talk about the feature set what they have used so authors have come up with a set of eight features to represent each sentence the first one being abstract rouge which means for every sentence they would calculate a rouge score between the sentence and the abstract of the paper and whatever score you get acts as a one dimension in that sentence representation so the idea is since abstracts are already a summarized version of the full paper we already have it in a dataset so why not use it so if you see this is more or less like a cheating because you already have some summarization behavior inherently in your dataset which you are utilizing in the form of features 
but since the authors already mentioned about structural patterns that exist in this kind of data set so i guess it's fair to use such metrics that would help a model understand like which sentence has to be a part of summary or not having said that i believe scaling this feature to a data set that doesn't have such explicit abstract section is a limitation to this feature value at least although in that case one can go about doing a rouge between the sentence and the overall document and put that score as one of the feature dimension as that would give a sense of coverage the sentence holds with respect to the document okay so the second feature they talk about is location they say we assign sentences with integer location for seven different sections so all the sections that they have in the paper based on that they give an integer value as a second dimension to the feature representation because the idea is some part of the full paper would be contributing more towards summary and some would be contributing less for example literature survey and results might not contribute that much compared to how much a conclusion or introduction might contribute the third feature that they use is called numeric count which is based on the intuition that sentences containing heavy maths are unlikely to be good summaries when taken out of context yeah fair enough then they also use title score which is nothing but a word overlap between the title and the sentence excluding the stop words and since title can be thought of as extreme summarization to a given document so if you have higher overlap of any sentence with the title the sentence has to be important the next is the key phrase score the way they use this is for every sentence they find out how many key phrases occur in that sentences the more the key phrase important a sentence would be these are the key phrases that they already have with the data set but if we want to extend this system to other documents which do not have predefined key phrases then we can look out for other techniques that do a keyword extraction earlier i had made a video on that as well i'll put that in the i button do check that out the next feature that they use is tfidf which is a pretty classic get useful technique for giving importance to every lexical unit in a document and mostly we talk about words so as they mention they take into account the frequency of the word that occurs in a given document so here they're talking about the full research paper as a document and then they calculate the idf for that word which is essentially how infrequent does this document occur in a corpus of all the remaining research papers that they have so multiplying both of these metrics give you a tf idf value and yes stop words were ignored during this calculation the next feature that they talk about is document tf idf this is the same version of what tf idf does so instead of just considering a corpus of all the papers and calculating idf at that level instead what they say is we use the count of words in a sentence as term frequency unlike what they were doing in the previous version of tf idf they were calculating a words frequency based on a document here they are just calculating a words frequency given in a sentence of a paper and the idf value is calculated based on other sentences that occur in the same paper this can be seen as a localized tf idf where the maximum words or the universe in which i'll calculate things is from a single document unlike the previous one that considered a full whole large corpora from where it would calculate the essential metrics again the hypothesis that goes for tf idf is to see how important a word is for a research paper whereas for document tf idf it calculates how important a word is for a given sentence okay moving forward we talk about the last feature which is sentence length the intuition was like shorter sentences are very unlikely to be a good summary because they cannot possibly convey as much information as a longer sentence would do which is again a fair assumption to make okay so these are all the features that authors have mentioned while they think of how to represent a sentence now let's see the architectures what authors have proposed so they have this beautiful diagram that kind of tells about one of the structures that they have finalized and are using for the evaluation purposes you have a sentence you pass it through a lstm by inputting each word at a time and at the output end you'll be getting a vector representation that captures all the interword dependencies that occurred in that sentence once you have that let's say it's of d dimension you pass it through a fully connected layer and again get a representation at this place let's call it r1 
in parallel you have an abstract vector which is nothing but you get a representation of an abstract by averaging out the word vectors that were trained using word to vec so you get some d1 representation at this level and these are all the eight features that author have used that kind of give your model a global context as well you concatenate both of them so it becomes d1 plus 8 and again you pass it through a fully connected layer and you get a representation let's call it r2 as a part of next step you concatenate both of these things so you have r1 plus r2 representation you again pass it through a fully connected layer you get some representation at this point as well then you apply a dropout to avoid overfitting and then you pass it through a linear layer followed by a softmax that gives you a distribution over two classes where zero being not extractive and one being extractive then you would apply a loss which would be cross entropy and then you back propagate the loss to train the parameters of this one again the fully connected layer at this place the weights at these layers and again the weights of lstm so these are the trainable parameters that your model learns based on how accurate you were able to make the final predictions so they call this saf net architecture where s stands for sentence a for abstract and f for features the rest of the models that they tried were just feature net where they didn't use the lstm representation or an abstract representation and they also tried just the lstm network without considering the abstract and features that they propose yeah so here they essentially talk about the word to vec model that i was talking about which was trained using 10,000 papers for 100 dimensions then authors point out an ensemble method that uses saf plus f which is sentence abstract features and a feature model so this is an ensemble and also they used another model of sentence and feature so these are again the two models so they have like four models in place at this point then they use weighted average from both the models to finalize and give the probability whether a sentence should be a part of summary or not so they talk about c being a parameter and saf is an ensemble of saf net which is the s1 and f net which is the s2 and again similarly for s plus f s net is s1 and f net is s2 so since they say this is a weighted average which means c can take a value between 1 and minus 1 because if you put 1 at this place we are only considering s2 for its prediction if you consider minus 1 at this place then we are just considering s1 for its prediction and for the value of 0 the s1 and s2 contribute equally yeah so that is the idea i guess we are done with the paper now so this is the result that they show they evaluate on rouge l matrix only so these are all the previous works that have been done in this domain and this is the ensemble that they talk about you can see like with huge margin they were able to make the predictions correctly to whether a sentence should be a part of extractive summary or not okay we are done i really found this paper to be interesting because of the fact it uses latest techniques that go around doing a sequence modeling and getting a feature vector for each sentence as well as the meta features that they have used which is pretty interesting one probable suggestion as a part of post processing step I guess would be to employ some kind of ranking mechanism within the sentences that you choose which are a part of summary so something like maximum marginal relevance can be applied to see if you're able to hit different sections of the highlights and the root score increases or not anyways if you like such content do share it with your friends hit like and do subscribe to the channel thank you